4-4 simplifying fractions with exponents. Okay, here's the steps I'd like you to follow today for simplifying fractions with exponents. Step one, you're going to expand the numerator and denominator using prime factorization. That could be cake method, that could be hockey stick, that could be um, using the tree method, any of those or a combination thereof. I want you to expand everything out. Again, I really want to emphasize you have to show your work today. Next step, what do you have on the top that you have on the bottom? So anything that you see on the top, you're going to cancel that out with something on the bottom that's exactly alike. If there's nothing left on the top, you're just going to put a 1. So you'll have 1 over whatever's remaining on the bottom. If there's nothing left on the bottom, just put what is left on the top with no fraction bar. So it'll just look like a straight expression. No, it won't look like a fraction. Okay, here's our first problem. So there's nothing really to expand. There's no prime factorization because 3 and 5 are both primes. B can't be expanded because there's no exponent. So you're going to look. What do you have on the top that you have on the bottom? You've got a B on the top, a B on the bottom. Cross them out. Is there anything else that you can cross out? Nope. So that'll leave you 3 over 5. Number 2, 5x over 10x. I want you to expand it out, at least for today, getting used to seeing what is on the top that's on the bottom. So we would write this as 5 times x over 2 times 5 times x. 2 times 5 is 10, so that's where that comes from. Now you're going to see what do you have on the top that you have on the bottom. Well, we've got some 5s that we can cancel out, and we've got a pair of x's that we can cancel out. Is there anything left on the top and the bottom that we could cancel out? Nope. As a matter of fact, everything on the bot on the top, sorry, has been canceled out. So if everything on the top is gone, we're going to put a 1 up there. It's kind of a placeholder. So we've got 1 over 2, or 1 half. Would you try this problem? So go ahead and pause the video and um, simplify this fraction, making sure that you show your work. Okay, so let's expand this using prime factorization. So I would want you to write this as 2 times 7 times a times a over, how could we break up 24? 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times a. What do you have on the top that you have on the bottom? Again, I want you to write this out showing your work. So you need to have at least one of these fractions. You don't have to have both. I put both just so you can see what you're left with so it looks a little more um, organized. We can cross out twos. We can cross out a set of a's. We can't cross out anything else because there's it's not on the top and on the bottom. So on the top we'll put 7a and then 2 times 2 times 3 is 12 so we'll have 7a over 12. That's the answer. Will you try number four please? Expand it out using prime factorization, then cross out what you have on the top that you have on the bottom. I'll give you a moment to do that, and pause the video, and then come back and let's see if we get the same answer. So when you expanded this out, did you write on the top 5 times x times x times x? And on the bottom, did you write 3 times 5 times x times x? That's a good start. That's what we're at least you want to be working on getting that written down. Now you don't have to rewrite this, but I'm doing it just so you can it's a little more neat and a little easier for hopefully for you to see follow along. So what do you have on the top that you have on the bottom? You got a pair of fives, and it looks like two pair of X's here that I'm going to cross out. So that leaves, and you got to be careful because sometimes if you're not neat, if you're not organized, you might miss what you have left over. So on the top you have an X, and on the bottom you have a 3. So it would be X over 3 would be your simplified version. Number 5, 40AB over 5AB. Expand this out using prime factorization, showing your work, showing what you expanded it, it out to, and then cancel out. Pause the video, do that, then come back and we'll see if you got the same answer. 
All right, so expand it out. This should look like 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times A times B. And on the bottom, we have 5 times A times B. Start canceling things out. If you weren't able to do that, you should be able to see what's on the top and what's on the bottom. So I'm going to cross out a pair of 5s. I'm going to cross out a pair of A's. I'm going to cross out a pair of B's. Nothing else to cross out. Now notice we've crossed out everything on the bottom. So if you cross out everything on the bottom, you're basically just left with the top. So 2 times 2 times 2, we would just write that as a plain old 8. And that's our simplified version. Number 6. Go ahead and try this one. Pause the video. Expand it out using prime factorization, showing how you expanded it. I want to see it on your paper. That'll be part of the homework. Okay. So we got 2 times 2 times x times y times y. And then 2 times 3 times x times x times y. Now if you didn't do that, write it down. And then I want you to cross out what you see on the top that you see on the bottom. So you should be crossing out a pair of 2's pair of X's and a pair of Y's. So what do I have left on the top? Be careful, make sure you get everything. And what do I have on the bottom? Again, make sure you're getting everything. So we'll be left with 2Y over 3X. Would you try number seven, please? Okay, did you expand it out? Did you write five times T over two times five times T times T? Now, what do you have on the top that you have on the bottom? You got a pair of fives. You got a pair of T's. Now, what do you notice here? Did you notice that there's nothing left on the top? So did you put a one? And then on the bottom, we're left with 2T. Number eight, go ahead and try this one. Expand it out, simplify. Okay. So if I expand this out, I've got 2 times 3 times x times x times x times y. And on the bottom, i got 2 times x times x. So what do I have on the top and the bottom? A pair of 2's, a pair of x's, another pair of x's. What do you notice in this problem? Did you notice that everything on the bottom was crossed out? So we could put a 1 there, but anything divided by 1 is just itself. So if everything on the bottom is canceled out, we're just left with the top stuff, so we can write it as 3xy. Here's my favorite problem. Go ahead and try this problem. Okay, now when you expand this out, you're going to get something a little bit crazy. You're going to get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times d times x times x times x times x times y times y over... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times D times X times X times X times X times Y times Y. Pretty impressive that I didn't breathe there, aren't you? All right, so what do you see on the top that you see on the bottom? A pair of 2's. Another 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 pair of 2's. Now I got a pair of D's. A pair of X's. Another pair of X's. Another pair of X's, another pair of X's, a pair of Y's, and a second pair of Y's. Everything canceled out because, as hopefully some of you may have noticed, anything over itself is one. I've tried to beat that into your brain, so hopefully you remembered that and you didn't write all this baloney. You just put one. So anything over itself is a plain old one. So you might want to check that before doing problems. Okay, watch the video. Behold, the solid body electric guitar. But where did it come from? Meet Les Paul, born in Wisconsin in 1915. According to his piano teacher, Lester William Paulsfus didn't have much musical talent. Yet when he was eight years old, Lester taught himself to play the harmonica. He even invented a harmonica holder. By the time he was a teenager, Lester had taught himself to play the guitar and the banjo. After 
taking the stage name of Les Paul, he began playing country music. And by the time he was 21, Les Paul had formed a band and toured professionally. When he wasn't happy with the volume of his acoustic guitar, he just invented a new one. Les Paul invented the solid body electric guitar in 1941. He called his original instrument the log. It was basically guitar strings and electric pickups attached to a solid block of pine wood. Although other inventors had already worked on the concept of an electric guitar, Les Paul had a major advantage. His pioneering recording techniques helped popularize his design. After several more years of fine-tuning, the Gibson Musical Instrument Company put a Les Paul model into production. The rest, as they say, is history. So, how genius is this inventor? On the American Dream scale, he gets a five. Aside from becoming a profoundly influential musician, Les Paul also invented multi-track recording. On the Benefit to Humanity scale, he gets a two. Mass production has made electric guitars affordable to would-be rock stars across the globe, and Les Paul's music has inspired countless musicians to pick up a six-string. On the ripple effect scale, he gets a three. Before Les Paul, the electric guitar was a controversial spin on a traditional instrument. Now it can be found in nearly every genre of music, from country to acid rock and everything in between. Let us know what you think. So, there you go, the electric guitar, pretty influential, and this is it for this lesson. Thank you. Bye.